My freak bug flies all the time. People hate it, and I love it. Is there a moment in my life that I've embraced some of the labels that I've been given? I mean, yeah, every day. Like, I mean, I try to embrace everything that I have been told or that I have been given or that I give myself because, like, it's part, I feel like, of who I am. There's nothing at this point that someone can tell me that is going to make me feel inferior or self-conscious because I know who I am through and through and that is the thing that makes me better and, and feel confident and, and truly know who I am as a person. What empowers you to let your freak flag fly? I came out seven years ago and like, um, you know, with the past seven years, I have now gained my confidence and I've, I've gained who I am. And now at the point where I'm at, I know who I am, I know what I want, and I know where I'm going. And with that has given me the power to be who I am. My freak flag flies all the time. People hate it, and I love it. Have you ever been made to feel unloved because of a label or freak attribute that you've been given? I am labeled as a chub when it comes to different tribes in the community. And to me, I, I feel comfortable in my own skin. Like, I don't identify with who, what I look like, how I am, how I feel. To me, I'm just a regular person, but then there's people out there that just come towards me or try to get to know me because of their own fetishes, which in general makes me feel as bad or just being wanted for who I am not or what I don't feel like. How has being fetishized for your freak attributes affected your life? Um, at first I was okay with it just because, I don't know, I didn't feel loved. I felt like I would never find somebody that would love me for who I am. So I would just take people that wanted what I was. But as I got older, it's just like, a label doesn't define me. Just because somebody is into a fetish or a one out of a chubby chaser, that's not who I am. I'm more than that. And growing up, even coming here to Chicago, it's just like, I am who I am. I will identify how I want and just be happy with who I am instead of thinking that I'm only a certain type of person for somebody. Because there's more people out there that like me for my personality for my brightness, other than what I look. My freak fun flies all the time. People hate it, and I love it. How do you deal with being gay in a primarily heterosexual office? Yeah, my goal is to like use it to my advantage. So I think a lot of clients see gay as different. I work in financial services marketing, so it's definitely you know, white collar office space, typically I am able to use being gay in my office space as an advantage. Um, you know, it's different. It's, you know, comedic in some ways. Um, I'm trying to use that to my advantage. How do you use it to your advantage? I would say a lot of the times on the phone, I'm a breath of fresh air. I'm trying to be gay in terms of, you know, making jokes and making lighthearted of serious situations because that's an opportunity, whereas this is typically a very boring day. Um, my goal is to, you know, make light of situations and trying to use my sexuality often as a joke. My freak bug flies all the time. People hate it, and I love it. Have you ever been given any labels or assigned any freak attributes? So um, I'm a neuroatypical person or a mentally ill person. So the sort of labels I've had to negotiate range from diagnostic labels like one who has complex post-traumatic stress or agoraphobia or whatever the diagnosis is, all the way to like, you know, psycho, um, or even mentally ill or neurodivergent or neuroatypical. Those are all labels uh, that I've had to that I've either that have either been projected upon me or that I've had to make use of depending on their use in different spaces. How have these labels and stigmas affected your life? I have ambivalent feelings about them all. Um, they are, they have use in different spaces. I've also come across the labels that are rather stigmatizing, like uh, 
like psycho and crazy and insane, which have been projected on me by people that are frustrated, afraid, or ignorant of what those lived experiences are. Um, and those don't become less upsetting over time, but you learn to not take them personally. How has your perception of those labels changed over time? I believe that the biggest thing is to have allies and have people that have your back, people that you can rely on, people that are loyal to you, people that are interested in and invested in understanding you and helping you and meeting you on your own level, on your own terms. Um, people that are interested in understanding how little they understand. Um, and cultivating those relationships, having them close to you has been a great help. Also, just not even taking the labels personally, understanding that they are, some of them have use in certain spaces, like you use diagnos diagnostic language in medical spaces. You use other language with your partners, other language with your colleagues. Being okay with the idea that no one label describes them entirely, they're just instruments. And the stigmatizing labels know that the people who use them are people you don't want in your life.